It's not going to be easy finding one man in an entire Republic. I hope someone here has seen something. The bandits may be there, but look what they've left us with. We'll have a hard time putting this place back together. Oh, nonsense. As long as we all do our bit, we shouldn't be too hard to find goods. Are the bad men going to come back? The gentlemen of the town guard are strapped. Could be I know something more. What's it worth to you? Uh, Clive, listen! I found someone who says he's heard the rumors about Nan. Have you? Go on. Tell him what you told me. All right. It's like I said. A wizened old crone by the name of Karen's been selling steel to whoever will pay her price, be they knight or knave. Says the more swords and spears she puts in people's hands, the more war they'll wage. And the more war being waged, the more call for swords and spears. And who will they all turn to to keep them in steel? Why, the good Reaper herself. <laughs> and you've seen this Reaper at work? Aye, it just so happens I have. You'll find her right here, plying her trade most days. Here in Delamil. Where exactly? She has a stall here in the market, but if you're not the patient type, you can probably find her at her storehouse on the edge of town. But it'd be a bolder man than me that braved that particular nest of vipers. Feeling bold, traveler? I hope so, for your sake. Now, if that's all, I have places to be. Sorry to have kept you. You don't think Nan's the Reaper, do you? Not unless she's discovered the secret of how to be in two places at once. Eh? What do you mean? Lady Karen hasn't left the hideaway in weeks. So who has been running this store he spoke of? Good question. I'll go and have a look. And I'll visit this storehouse on the edge of town. All right, but be careful, Clive. You too, Goots. The finest cell swords. The gentlemen of the town guard are strapped. Mummy. What a mess. Saved and with ours. You fought very bravely. The safety of the town is. Time to brave the viper's nest. Just you, is it? <laughs> Thought I might have laid it on a bit thick. It was a fairly unconvincing tale. So, what now? That's up to you. Die a slow death, or a quick one. Boys, he's all yours. But that sword is mine. <laughs> Now we can protect. 
Done it now. Go on. Tell me what I've done. When the Borgwin finds out you've killed his men, he'll have your head. He only wanted that bull of a manservant, the dim one always clinging to Karen's skirts. You weren't even supposed to be here. Who the hell are you anyway? What were you going to do to him? The Borgwin wanted him to get to Karen. I was only supposed to point the lump in the right direction once he arrived in Dalamil. But then you turned up. Well, go on then. If you're going to end me, end me. You're not worth the effort. Now be gone. Before I change my mind. <laughs> Fucking coward! I need to find Goot. Right now. Get your filthy paws off me, you naughty painted lout! Stop calling me names! And stop spreading them horrible lies about Nan! Huh. Well, that will be easy enough. For they are not lies. Every last word is true. And she must pay for her crimes in blood! <laughs> blood?! Goose, are you all right? He... He's gonna kill Nan! He said she had to pay in blood! After what she did, it is only right. She ruined my life and the lives of countless others. That loathsome harpy's very existence is a crime, and I will not allow it to continue. Goots, was it? I have no quarrel with you. Only with your employer. Run along now. You need not pay for her sins. No. No? I don't care what she did. I won't let you hurt Nan. Promise me you won't hurt her. Or I'll... Or I'll... 
or I'll kill you myself! Goose, no. Enough, all of you! Karen. But how did you... <laughs> You're a sight less clever than you think you are, the pair of you. Did you think I wouldn't notice the two of you slinking off together? Well, the whole thing got me thinking. Who in Dalamil might bear me a grudge? And a certain snivelling shit I ran afoul of in my fairy years came to mind. Though it was just Bogan back then, wasn't it? I thought the years might have taught you some sense. But I see you're the same pants-pissing craving you've always been. What was it we called you? Wet legs. You. You bitch. Everything that happened. It was all your fault. And now you'll finally pay for what you did to me. Goods, you... If you want a piece of Nan... You'll have to go through me. Oh, fuck. <gasps> you great galoot. Out of the way, I can handle this myself. So, wet legs, you remember what you told me when we last met? An eye for an eye. Wise words, sir. Wise words. And now... It's time to collect. Sorry to keep you waiting. Is he... Dead? No. But I reckon he wishes he was. It's an easy going through life, one eye shot of a pair. After all, I should know. You don't mean it. Oh, don't tell me you didn't notice. Lost it to old wet legs back when we were working the same routes. Said I'd stolen from his strong box. I'd done nothing of the sort, mind. But that didn't stop him taking his little revenge. So I took some of my own. Sorry, lost everything. His coin, his clients. Always knew he'd be back one day to claim his due. But he crossed a line dragging poor Goots into this. He didn't hurt you, did he? No, Nan. Still got all my arms, see? Legs, too. <laughs> but what if he comes back again? What if he does? First we take the other eye, then we work our way down. He'll learn his lesson soon enough. But something tells me the wet legs has learned it already. Right. Let's get you back to the hideaway. You've attracted quite enough attention already. Ta-ra, Clive. Remind me never to cross you, Karen. Someone's got himself in trouble. I don't see your master here. So you can start by giving us all the coppers in your purse. I already told you, I have nothing. <laughs> then maybe we'll take that pretty outfit and the steel you're wearing. Uh, uh, please! These men are trying to rob me! I'll deal with this. Thank you. You that one's master, then? <laughs> if you kindly pay the coin he owes us, we can pretend you didn't draw your blade on Republican soldiers. 
Or you can go back to your garrison and I won't report you to your captain. Oh, you're more than welcome to. He hasn't had many visitors since we slit his throat. Expect as much from Hugo's faithful, but these were men of the fist. Much has changed in the Republican army since they lost their rock. You've seen this kind of thing before, then? Many times. I was sent here to observe the situation. You're one of Rutherford's men. He sent me to look for you. Well, then you have my thanks. I fancy I could defend myself against one, perhaps two, but a whole regiment. But I arrived in Dalamil several days ago, but when I called upon the captain of the local garrison to make inquiries, his men confiscated my effects and locked me in a cell. The captain is no more, and his men make the rules now. Fortunately, I was able to bribe my way free, only to be stopped again by those soldiers you so kindly dispatched. What of the Fist Central Command? Surely they wouldn't allow such lawlessness amongst their ranks. I would imagine they are unaware of it. Most of the army has fallen back to the capital and hunkered down behind her walls. Those who weren't recalled now rule the fringes unchecked, answering to no one but themselves. Then it's worse than we imagined. You should return to Rosaria. It's not safe here. I'll find a caravan heading north. You won't mind if I borrow one of these soldiers' coin purses? Not at all. Now, to find this second associate of Rutherford's. If he was bound for Oriflam, I'll start at North Reach and see if I can pick up his trail. There's a lot of road between here and the capital. Rutherford's man can be anywhere. Dumb your tongue and put fire in your belly. Would you uh, care for a taste? You're with the others. They've already relieved me of my belongings. I'm not. I'm looking for someone who was sent here by a man named Rutherford. And then you found him. I'm Alastair Rockford, attendant to the Lady Ariane of House Wellesley. Of the seven high houses of Rosaria. It's been a long time since last I saw my great aunt. Is she well? My Lord Marquis? Uh, yes. Yes, she is. The Lady Dowager has granted me leave to assist your Uncle Stuart. I was on my way back from the old capital, 
when I saw some villagers being robbed on the road here. Bandits. They looked more like field hands, but it didn't matter in the end. I did what I could to help the victims, but all it earned me was a pommel to the temple. Which way did they go? South, toward the gate. All right. I'll take care of them. Founder knows I've met enough of their kind. You head back to Northreach. Visit the Vale. Tell them I sent you. Thank you. I shall. Founder be your shield. They just couldn't resist, could they? This one's all pretty boy. Make for the town while you can. There may be more bandits nearby. You don't need to tell me twice. Many thanks, traveler. This looks to be all of them. I thought I told you to make for the Vale. And stand by as ill might befall the heir to the ducal throne. It's just Clive, and I'm fine. Which is more than can be said for you. I will survive. Strange that the garrison wouldn't intervene in such a brazen attack so close to their gates. The garrison have their hands full inside the city. Some days they don't even send out patrols. There are few hands left to work the fields, and even fewer to transport the grain. The market stalls are nearly bare, and the price for what remains is exorbitant. It's not uncommon to see a fight break out over a crust of bread. When I said the ones who attacked me didn't have the look of bandits, I meant it. They were probably just desperate. Rockford, listen to me. If you are to continue your investigation, you first need to seek the attention of a healer. I... Of course. I shall return to Northreach right away. But allow me to thank you first. Had you not happened along, I... Don't thank me. Thank Rutherford. It was he who sent me. I suppose he'll be wondering where I've got to. I shall send a bestolus as soon as I'm able. Good day. My uncle certainly has his work cut out for him. 
If it isn't already too late. I should go and tell Rutherford that his colleagues are still in one piece. I got peppers to numb your tongue. There were ghosts at the gates, not days ago. You needn't fret. The preachers. Are... Meadows then. said I should be able to find what I'm looking for somewhere nearby. Bright blue dragons and bright yellow flowers. Should be easy enough to spot. This must be our way then. Right. Let's get this over with. the wyvern's liver. Now I just need to find the herbs. Bright yellow with a heady scent.
think that's everything Molly needs to resurrect her recipe. Better head back. lost its appetite. So, did you have that word with Tomes then? I did, and he was as helpful as ever. He told me exactly where to look, in fact. And what precisely will I be cooking up? Or is it better not to know? Blueback wyvern liver. And, uh, a herb known as Saint's Bonnet. Ah, wyvern livers, was it? Well, at least it weren't actual worms, I suppose. Now then, you stay right where you are. I've got some cooking to do. Let's hope these grand old chefs of yore knew what they were on about. And here we have it. Fried Mortress of Skyworm. Ivan's offered to make sure it's fit for consumption. Well, I say offered. He as good as begged. And rightly so. Is there any higher honour than partaking in a slice of culinary history? So, not fit for consumption, then. What? What witchery is this? The crackle of the crust gives way to an almost violent richness. Yet, it is the piquant kiss of the saint's bonnet that tames this savage dish. It is a tour de force, a force of nature, even. A maelstrom of flavor and sensation a graceful beast emerging from centuries of slumber. I think he likes it. Well, I can't quite tell with all that nonsense he's talking. But I reckon you might be right. It was decent then, I take it. Decent? It's remarkable. And I defy any man to say a word to the contrary. Sid, might I suggest that you command a party of your finest men and women? to procure a dozen blueback wyverns forthwith. I'll give it some thought. Nothing like a dish of cold vengeance to foul a gut. Uh, I'm sorry, Nan. I, I didn't mean to make things worse. I just thought I had to protect you. Like you've protected me. Aye. Well, someone had to. Your parents certainly didn't give a whip for your well-being. Reckon the both of us would be worse off if I'd not taken you on. You've always been me right eye, Goots. And I'd have you stay that way. So don't you dare go looking for trouble again. Well, I will. If you ever need help, I'll do it again and again. And you can't stop me. Why, you big lump. Fine. Play the hero if it makes you happy. 
Thanks, Nan. I won't let you down. There's nothing he wouldn't do for you. That's as may be. But if he's ever to make his own way in life, he'll need to start looking out for himself as well. Till then, he'll need people to watch his back, just like you did in Dallamill. Don't think I didn't appreciate that. Of course. His family. Stop it. You make me one good eye, mister. I don't go thinking that'll do you any favours. A potion today will cost you the same as it did yesterday. I see you're still here. The rest's location affords a constant flow of traders, and with it, a constant flow of information. Speaking of which, I received word from both my associates. They have resumed their investigations, thanks to you. I only happen to be in the right place at the right time. They both seem to think the realm's prospects rather grim. I am afraid that grim would be putting it lightly. Storm is in crisis, and if we are to free her, we must work quickly. And we must work together. Such is your Lord Uncle's wish, as it is mine. I'm all for making this town a welcoming place. Mm. Hospitality has its limits.
We can use the ruins to cross the ravine. As you... They will allow it. The Echoes have a will of their own.
Tell us about Yote, Joshua. She's strong-willed, loyal, and deadly with a blade. Much like Clive, but with better manners. Do. Where are you off to now, then? Bound for the free cities, perhaps? Oh, no need to say if you'd rather not. We all have our reasons. Ain't exactly feeling like sharing with strangers myself at the mo. Truth be told, we could do with a bit of inspiration. Don't know which way to turn no more. Was doing a roaring trade back in Oriflam. Right up until the poor Drake lost her noggin. So. I thought I'd try me luck in the desert. Then the fang went the same way. And don't get me started on the mess in the blooming Dominion. Suppose I could try Camber next. But knowing my luck, the old place be crawling with the works before I'd even sat at me stall. But as I always say, where there's crisis, there's opportunity. The opportunity to mint skill, that is. So, where to next? Is there any money to be made in ash? Do orcs even carry gill? Injured. What happened here? Where are your comrades? Ether flood up ahead. It swallowed our camp while we slept. My own men did this. Turned every last one of them. There's a village not far from here. Tabor. The people were kind to us. It's only a matter of time before they won't stand a chance. We can't let those monsters reach the... Hoko, you catch your breath. Thank you. Our encampment is up ahead. Just off the track. <laughs> they must not reach Tabor. Forgive me, Lord Kuka. Rest well, soldier. He said the encampment was close. Let's hope the Akashic are still there.
Another ether flood. They're everywhere now. We can't go around it. Then we'll just have to be careful. Good. I got here in time. Someone there! Please, I, I can't move my leg! That doesn't sound like an Akashic. You're with the battalion? I am. I heard the fighting. Are the others taken care of? One of your brothers in arms told me what happened and asked for help. Another survivor? Where is he? <laughs> Tell me. His wounds were too deep. <sighs> he was right to send you. Those things you slew are no longer my brothers. Tabor is safe thanks to you. Here. You've earned it. You seem familiar. Have we met? You must have me confused with someone else. Wait. That scar! Son of a whore! You're Sid! I was there! In Kostnis when you killed my brothers! I was there in Rosalith when you killed my commander! My war with Hugo Kupka is over. I bear no ill will toward those who followed him. And what of my ill will? Coward! Draw your steel. Lord Kupka shall be avenged! When your wounds have healed and your head has cooled, come and find me if you must. Though I hazard your life would be better spent in service of those who need it. Or have you forgotten your oath to the Republic? My oath? What would you know of oaths? I know how hard they are to keep. Which is why I'm giving you the chance to keep yours. No. <laughs> I won't be deceived. Lord Kupka told us of your crimes. You are an outlaw. A murderer, not some... <laughs> Some... Man... Like you or anyone else? I am nothing... Like you... 
But if you're not gonna kill me, then go. Leave! Just know that I will find you, Sid. Someday.
We're nearly there. Have you been to Tabor before? There are a few places I haven't. Welcome, travelers. We don't get many visitors here in Tabor. Where now, Joshua? There is a residence just inside the city gates. She awaits us within. My Lord Marquis, it is an honor. I am Yote, Knight of the Undying, charged with the protection of His Grace Joshua Rosfield, Keeper of the Flame of the Phoenix. Uh, of course. It all makes sense now. Would you care to elaborate? The Undying are loyal servants to the Ducal Throne or more specifically, to its heir. They have served our family for generations, albeit from the shadows. Since their inception, they have been tasked with the preservation and enactment of the rites of ancestral communion. After the events at Phoenix Gate, it was the Undying who delivered me to safety. And since the day I left Rosaria, Yote has been my constant companion and protector. Without her sword, I would not have survived my journey across the realm. Rise, Lady Yote. You saved my brother. I owe you a debt I can never repay. I but did my duty. Come now. Tell us what you've discovered. Your Grace. It is as you feared. The vessel we spied off the coast of the Crystalline Dominion on the night of her fall. It was the Ein Herjar. Beyond any doubt. The Black Galleon. Joshua, the Ein Herja is the Royalist flagship. What business would they have in the Dominion? Uh, upon learning of Walud's involvement in recent events at Drake's Fang, I sensed the malign influence of Ultima, and bid Yote and the Undying look into the matter. We have reason to believe that the Black Galleon weighed anchor shortly after the fighting began and set a course due south. For Canva. Then it is Waluda knights who besiege the cities. What is left of them? Yes. And the Black Galleon sails up at one man's behest. Barnabas Tharm. Are we truly safe here in the Agora? Uh, 
the city guard have been paid, if that's what you're implying. All the more reason for them to run. Well, you are free to leave, Lord Minister. Markets abandoned, warehouses aflame, blackened hulls choking every port in the capital. Canva is ruined. The Rome teeters on the brink of chaos, and all you can think about is commerce. Forgive us. We were not aware Dalmechia now subsisted on charity. Not quite. How dare you? Distinguished members of the Council, you must forgive His Majesty this intrusion. What did you... What is the meaning of this? A trifle crowded, but I fear it will have to serve, my liege. Very well. My colleagues, do you not see? The king, he has come to save us from the Akashic. He is a gift from the heavens, divine intervention, our very salvation. And of course, if it is compensation he requires, we would be most willing to negotiate a fair price for services rendered. Fools. Your ignorance unbecomes you. Your Majesty, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would swear that the fiends washing the cobbles of Canva with the blood of her citizens wear the colors of Walud. <laughs> ha! So you do not deny it. Guards, fetter them and see our guests to the dungeons! <laughs> Enough. The girl is still here, somewhere in the city. Her consciousness fair dripping with her late father's hubris. A consciousness to which Muthos is inextricably bound and inexorably drawn. See that he is made welcome. Yes, your majesty. Come, Muthos. Surely the Prince's light cannot have sated you. So then... How long has Walud been under Ultima's control? How long indeed? Based on what we know of Barnabas's actions, I would guess some few years, mayhap more. But to what end? What does Ultima want? The tapestry. Show them. Gate, Drake's breath, and now here. But what is it? It is old, ancient, even. Naught's remains of the faith it represents, save what can be gleaned from the image itself. None could tell me what the one in the apodotry meant, even the undying. But I believe it may be the key to discerning Ultima's purpose. That figure in the center, 
the one beneath whom the icons congregate, that I believe to be Ultima. He is a god, or at least godlike. His very existence beyond our ken. The icons, and by extension their dominance, are meant to be his subjects. And while some, like Barnabas, have accepted this role, others have rejected it. Like you, Clive. Which is rather inconvenient, as it appears he needs you most of all. And gods don't like to be disobeyed. Oh, I don't suppose they do. Clive, may I tell Yote of the lake? By all means. Yote, I will be accompanying my brother to the free cities. Whilst we are afield, I would have you watch over those Clive has made his wards. Omiya lost Delan to his sag Ilith. Though well concealed, the hideaway lacks trained fighters to defend its occupants should they be discovered. But it is my duty to... As it has ever been my brother's duty, remember. If... if that is your wish, your grace... But please be safe. If aught were to befall you, I... You have my word. Farewell, my lord. My lady. We are in your debt, Yote. Let's find our friends. for you very deeply and I her which is why I had to let her go opportunity beckon is that blade for hire perchance because I have a mind to make a killing figuratively I hope well yes and no a passing caravan carried with it a rumor most fortuitous for one in my trade that an elder Dread Evis had been sighted in the fields of Karava. Dread Evis are aggressive beasts. Compelled as they are to acts of violence, few survive to maturity. But those that do develop a hide of phenomenal value. A hide you want to sell? Eventually, yes. Though I would have it tanned first that it might be crafted into marvels the likes of which the world has never seen. Dread Evis skin is a rare thing indeed. But the worked hide of a well-aged beast? Now, that would fetch such coin that Gilbot himself might weep with envy. Bring me that beast's skin and I will share with you the bounty of our combined labors. All right. I'll hunt your Evis. Of course you will. When one lives in such troubled times, it is a fool who lets opportunity slip his grasp. Leave Tabor through the East Gate, but take the path that branches west. Once you reach the checkpoint at Tovany, you are a mere stone's throw from the fields of Karava. I eagerly await your safe, and above all, triumphant return. Here, take a look at my wares. Take care.
Cyril. How fares the search? Well, your grace, my report shall be with you ere long. Ah, yes. Yote is otherwise engaged at my behest. And the duty of wardenship? Fulfilled. For as you see, I've been reunited with my first shield. I am Cyril, Knight of the Undying and Bearer of the Burning Quill. Charged with chronicling the mortal deeds of his grace, Joshua Rosfield. Keeper of the Flame of the Phoenix and rightful Archduke of Rosaria. I entrusted Cyril here with overseeing the investigation into Ultima's origins. Findings from his brothers and sisters afield are delivered here to be collated and catalogued. Just how many undying are there? Not nearly enough, milady. Yet we are glad to give our all in service to the Phoenix. Such is and has ever been our creed. I see. You have your associates, I have mine. But you may now think of them as ours. That won't be a problem, will it? The Phoenix is our sun, and we but the shadows that quicken in his radiance. It is from the darkness that we serve, both him and now you. Pray accept this token. For as long as you bear it, members of our order will reveal themselves unto you. If there is nothing further, no. You are dismissed. Your grace. To Canva, then. We'll talk about this later. So it will seem very, uh... You certainly keep strange bedfellows, Joshua. Careful how you pack that leather. You! Finally! No one was paying me the slightest heed. Is something wrong? At the university, the students would hang on my every word. Sadly, this far from home, I'm just a vagrant greybeard. The university? You're a scholar. A specialist in ancient cultures, the most accomplished in all Valisthea, some have said. Not that I look the part in these tattered rags. In my heyday, no obstacle could have kept me from my studies. Yet here I am, a wizened windbag, bested by the many steps of Tabor. The answers I seek lying just beyond my enfeebled reach. Would you do an old man a kindness and brave the stairs in my stead? You'll be amply rewarded, of course. Climb the stairs and... And memorize a few inscriptions for me. Uh, assuming you know your letters, that is. Some courteous soul is rumored to have carved clues to Tabor's rich history into stones dotted about the village. The three of them, to be precise. One each to the north, south, and east. I'm here in the hope that those carvings might shed light on a riddle I've been pondering for some time. Namely, the otherwise undocumented origins of Tabor's unique people. A people quite unlike those of neighboring lands. I can't promise I'll remember everything perfectly. Remember what you can. I'll piece together the rest. Make for the domed pavilions, and you'll have no trouble finding the stones. Ah. 
How are those new boots treating you? They're fantastic. Soft as Phoenix down, but tough as boiled bone. That Cyril fellow's an odd fish, don't you think? Well, scholarly sorts like him. History would be complete without mention of the Mother Crystals. Why won't the sky go back to how it was? I don't like it. Nor do I, dearie. In all my long years, I've never seen such a thing. Farmers must have settled here in Tabor. Thank you for the dealer. What golden plains might the wanderers have called home, I wonder? I should speak to the old scholar before I forget everything I've read. were in good repair considering their age. Oh, what that I could have seen them for myself. Oh, come, don't tease me now. What did you learn of this place and its people? Uh, let's start with the engraving to the south, shall we? Oh, what did it say? Guardians of the Crystal, the first stones of Tabor. Sacred hold thy noble blood till ends the mother's labor. I'm pretty sure that was it. Fascinating. It would seem the founders of this city were descendants of those fallen charged with protecting the mother crystals. But oh, whatever could have driven the Guardians so far from their sacred charges, I wonder? The engraving to the north is next, I think. Wanderers of the Golden Plains, lay your roots in stone. With pride recall thy noble past, and make these rocks a home. Or, I think that was it, at least. No doubt you're right. There are vestiges of nomadic customs in Tabor its guardian roots could never account for. This is proving most enlightening. Now, for the final stone. Children of the hunters, now tillers of the land, reap her promised blessing and give praise her gracious hand. That's all three. And so we add primitive farmers to Tabor's founding peoples, the final piece of the puzzle. 
three engravings. One for each of the three peoples to have settled Tabor in ancient times. Guardians of the Mother Crystal, wanderers from across the plains, and last, but certainly not least, hunters turned farmers. Little wonder it was so difficult to trace the roots of Tabor's culture. Those roots reached down through three distinct traditions. Nonetheless, one cannot help but wonder why this fact is not better known among scholars, given that the stones stand here for all to see. Too many stairs, perhaps. Ha! Too many by far. Here, and thank you. Enough of you are there. Looks like there's still plenty of fight in him yet.
is off my hands, the better. Here's your hide, as requested. I worried you might never return. Quickly, let me see it. Oh, as supple as a maiden's cheek, yet as adamant as her virtue. This is everything I had hoped for, and more. Clearly, my trust in you was not misplaced. You must be a hunter of considerable talent to have bested the beast with nary a scratch. Join me as my honored partner. With my means and your might, we shall be as wealthy as the merchant kings of Zemeckis. I don't plan on making a habit of this. I'm busy enough as it is. Very well. Though I believe fate had a hand in our meeting, it would be unbecoming of me to beg. Do not allow me to keep you from being about your business. Here, for the hide. Three cities and a sea. Sure, this is the right way, brother.
Shouldn't have messed with the leader of the pack, eh, boy? Free men are still holding their own, then. Do we have any idea where Gav and the others might be? There's a warehouse near the docks where we agreed to meet if there was any trouble. We should hurry.
What's happened? If we're going to do this... Clive, your timing is impeccable. It just so happens that right at this very moment, we're in need of someone with your talents. And what talents would those be? Why, your fearlessness and your skill with a blade. I'm listening. Well, as I'm sure you're aware, when these dark skies swept over the Republic, so too did a wave of chaos and confusion. Randalar has been particularly badly affected. Many of the Capital's bearers have lost their masters, or taken the opportunity to flee them. None remain free for long, of course. Most find themselves under the protection of the Fist before they get far. But the army too is in disarray, and finds itself unable to provide for its new charges. Which means, it has been looking to sell. And you've been looking to buy, to make sure these masterless bearers remain that way. Precisely. It's the perfect opportunity to free dozens more, and for an attractive price, no less. So where does my skill with a blade come in? Though we may have the funds to buy these bearers, we have nowhere to house them. So we've been searching for a place where they can be resettled. Somewhere far from the prying eyes of those who would see them enslaved once more. And we believe we have found one. Cashlock. A small hamlet hidden in a canyon. The place was abandoned a long time ago. But when the men moved out, the beasts moved in. And so we seek the aid of a fearless swordsman to... Encourage them to look elsewhere. You'll help, won't you? How could I refuse? Excellent. Theo, if you wouldn't mind making arrangements for the transportation of our guests, as we discussed? Of course. Leave everything with me. Sounds like you'll have your work cut out for you. I will. We have an entire village to stock and furnish. Residents and all. Even if I begin right now, I'll be working day and night. So I'd better get started. Try to clear the place out before the wagons roll in, won't you? I'll do my best. You will find the village in Cherdra's Thread, past Laitney's Cleft. My man there will open the gate for you. All right. Wish me luck. I'm sure you won't need it. <laughs> 